Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video we're going to use a Nexion slider to control the pulse width modulation of an Arduino digital output so we can brighten and dim an LED. This is going to be a very simple example. I'm going to break it up into two parts because in order to have multiple sliders controlling multiple Arduino outputs you have to send more data and I want to go over the basics with this video. We're going to set up the Nexion first and all we're going to use is a simple slider. We won't need any font on this because there won't be any text. We're going to have to add three parts. The slider, a timer, and a variable. The display has a width of 400 so we can have a little bit of fun with this slider. We're going to set its X position to be in 10. We're going to set it so it's 10 in from this side, or 10 pixels in, and 70 pixels down. And then we're going to set the width at 20 pixels less than 400, or 380, which should make it go 10 on each side and be even. And then the height, we're going to have a 100. And then there was something I learned in creating this video. You can change this by using these measurements up here, the width and height. I don't doubt that this was there, I just never needed it before because this is pretty big here. So the other thing is, is 255, when you enter that number, that makes it automatic. 250 should be less than 255, but you'll see what happens with my width. It actually got bigger. Just remember that 255, it does some sort of math to figure out what the best size is for this. In our case though, we're gonna make it a width of 50 and just for fun we're going to make it a height of 70 even though the height of the bar is 100 so it looks like it floats in there. We're going to send the data from the slider based upon a timing event. Whenever we press it we want to enable the timer and on release we want to disable the timer. And that's about it for the slider. So all we're going to do is set up a slider go back and forth and we're going to enable it when we touch it and we're going to disable it when we release the button. Now we'll go down to the variable itself. When you add a variable its default value is to be a number but we need to change that to a text or to a string because when we send the data to the Arduino it works a lot better if it's in a string format and not in a text format. And that's all we need to do with the variable. Now on the timer, we want this to send whatever changes are made on the slider every quarter second or every 250 milliseconds. So we make that change here. We also want it to start disabled. So in other words, that timer won't do anything until you press the slider. And then here's where the function comes in that we send the data. We need to convert it first. So we need to convert the value that's on the slider and put it into the text, into the variable, which we now have set up as a text. And then we'll leave it, if you put a zero at the end, then it just auto makes it the right length. In the next video, we'll have to do something with this last value. But for this video, we'll just leave it zero. And then we need to send that value out the serial port. Now we're going to compile it and see if I got it right. Yep, everything compiled well. Let's debug this just so I can show you something else. So it really doesn't do anything right now until we push this button and then you'll see data will start flowing into here. And I'll stop. So 3437. If we look at it, what it is in a string value, it's 47. So what it's doing is it's sending the value 47, but it's breaking it up into two, into two hex values. And if you look right below the cursor there, you can see that it's 34 and 37 equate to string value of 4 and 7. I'm going to bring up one more sheet here just to show you something else. When we're sending data in character format, the characters aren't numbers. They're just 0, 1, 2 like characters. So it's 0 through 9. The decimal equivalent is 48 to 57, and that converts to a hex value of 30 to 39. 
I always found it strange that the character 0 is 30 in hex, and 9 is 39 in hex. I always wonder if when they set up the ASCII codes years ago, if they didn't do that on purpose. But if you can memorize this portion of the ASCII, it really helps you when you do some troubleshooting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this, and we'll see that this will change. And you can see it went to 93. If we go to the hex values, though, 93. If you just look at 39 and 33, is 93. And when we hit 100, it should be three digits. And it is 1, 0, 0. If we go all the way down to here, it's only one digit, 0 or 1. 11, I guess. I didn't. Let's just go up a little bit. There we go. So 3, 2, 1. So this is how the information is going to be transmitted to the Arduino. It's going to be in 1, 2, or 3 hex bytes. And it'll be in this format. It'll be in string format. So there it would have sent a 53. Okay, so now we have to upload this to the display. And you can see it uploaded just fine. I'm going to go ahead and move the slider, but nothing's really going to happen. We haven't programmed the Arduino yet. We'll do that now. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, I use this unsigned long, um, and I, I put the word mill at the end of it to use it as my timing. Um, so I set it up as a delay. And then I have another um, variable called the interval, which is in milliseconds, which just causes my light to flash every second. I'm not going to go too much into that in this video. I'll point to another video a little later. The next thing we're going to do is I'm using a mega on this, not so much for this video, but for the follow-up one, we're going to want to show some data on, this, on the standard serial monitor that comes with the Arduino. And if I use the second serial port, then I can collect the data off the Nexion and then still show you data on the serial port. So it helps to explain things. But this should work just fine on the Uno. You just have to plug your pins for your Nexion display into the serial and ignore wherever I put serial to. You'd have to put serial. Now this is the part where I'll put a link to it. This is a, my, the way I do my timing. And like I said, instead of using the delay, I use this. And it just adds the interval to the current milliseconds and then causes it to wait for that interval before it will do anything within this. And what we'll do is we just turn this light off and on. I'm not sure why it was commented, but uh, I just cut and paste that. And just for brevity, again, I'm going to paste this in too. So what we're doing is we're checking to see if there's data on serial 2 or did the Nexion send anything. And if it did, then we're going to do what's in here. It's not formatted very well. Let me get that a little bit better. And we're missing a curly bracket. Oops. You know me and the editor. We got that back going, so i got to get this right. So let me hover over that. Um, I don't know if I've explained this before, but if you put your cursor right next to the curly bracket, it shows you where the opposite one should be. So that, that seems to be okay now. So if there's a data available, we're going to make a variable, a character variable called character, and we're going to set it equal to nothing. And we're going to build a string called data from display. In other words, the data that's coming from the next, and we'll set that equal to nothing. And then we wait 30 milliseconds. It's not very long, and normally I don't use delay, but this seems to be just fine. And then what we do is we read the data in. So while there's data available, in this case there should just be one, two, or three characters, it's going to collect those and push them one at a time onto this data from display. And then once it's read those one, two, or three characters, then it's going to leave this loop. And then here's where it gets interesting, because what we want to do is we want to analog write if you have any questions about pulse width modulation, I'll put a link right about now for a video on that specifically within the Arduino itself. We're going to use pin 12 for this. What we do is we take the data from display, which is in string format, and we need to convert it to an integer. So we take the variable data from display. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste it. And we're going to put the command to or the function to int. A lot of times I get this backwards. I put to int and then I put the variable within the brackets. And I'm assuming that's what the editor was hoping that I was going to do this time too. But I didn't. 
So, haha. -ha. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to set the interval equal to that same thing so that it will change the light when it flashes. But the interval is currently at 1000. So 1000 means the light's going to be on for a second and off for a second. And we'd like that to be maybe in the middle just to show a change. So we need to do some manipulation to that variable because what we're getting from the next gen is a value of 1 to 100. And we want to turn that into a value of 1 to like 2000 or something. I've done this before with a map function, but I'm just going to use math this time to do it. So we're going to set the interval equal to the same thing here. but we're going to multiply it by 20. That way at the lowest value it's at 20, which is a pretty fast flashing cycle, but at 100 it would be 2000. So that should work. And now for the big test. We're going to compile this and see what happens. Yeah, an editor, I got you again it looks like. Well now we'll see if it actually works though. And then once we once I show it to you on the display, we'll go back over it one more time. So now let's make sure that I do have the port set right. Yeah, it's a mega. And it looks like COM3. So it should be fine. Okay, and you can see that this light is flashing probably at the one second. Because if you remember, this isn't going to send anything till it's pressed. So this is just going to be at its default levels. And I don't know what, since I didn't assign any sort of output to this, it's probably just off until we move the slider. It's currently up a little high. I believe this is the low point and this is the high point. So as I move it this way, this light, actually I think I'm going to move it all the way up, which should set this light to its brightest level and should really slow this light down. And as you can see, it's a little bit blurry, but you can tell that that's flashing, and that LED is pretty bright. Now I'm going to move it the other way. I went ahead and went back and forth a few times. So you can see that it works pretty much as we would expect. I'm going to close this. And just so you can see what's happening, I'm going to go ahead and in serial write the data from display. And if you notice, I'm not using serial 2, I'm using serial. So when I compile this or load it, we should be able to open the serial monitor. But of course, I have to verify it. And we're going to upload it and start the monitor. Nothing's going to happen until I slide the slider. And you can see we get the characters just as we had thought. So once again, just to review, this is pretty much just a delay for the flashing light. You can ignore that if you want. It, here's where we collect the data. So we get the characters one at a time. We add them to the variable data for display. And then we analog write that value after we convert it to an integer. Now in our next video, we're going to have two sliders on the screen and two LEDs that will dim. In order to do that, we'll have to show how to differ differentiate between the signals being sent from the next gen. I wanted to break it up into two parts just to go over the basics in this one. And because in the next one we're going to have to manipulate the string when we get it in here and then do some things with it. And I thought it would be better to just do it in two steps. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.